Yeah, good evening, it's Charlie Zero 2 CTM. Um, well, I've just been playing around tonight with a, um, a monolithic amplifier that was very kindly uh, given to me. It's an ERA-6SM. And if you're wondering where it is, it's that little tiny little surface mount device there. It's a Darlington pair uh, with, with three internal resistors. You can sort of see there the size comparison with a standard um, 3904 um, discrete uh, transistor there. So just a tiny, tiny little amplifier there. Um, it's, it's designed um, up in the video bands for cell phones and the like. So if we could just have a, a quick look over here at the, um, the spec sheet. Uh, let me just zoom out there. We can see the device there. So it's a, um, it's a monolithic amplifier. Uh, surface mount in this particular case, uh, DC to 4 gigahertz, uh, internally matched to 50 ohms, which we'll see in a sec. Um, what else to say? So the typical applications it was built for was the cellular network, um, videos uh, amplifying here, um, microwave, so not, unsur not unsurprising I guess up in the other uh, gigahertz range. So I guess tonight was just a matter of playing around to see what this internal configuration here of the Darlington pair or how well this amplifier would perform uh, down in the HF range. Uh, it's got four terminals, uh, an input and an output, and then these two side tabs here are both linked together to be ground. Um, it talks about a, um, a test configuration which is here, so all you need is what we saw in the circuit, and we'll have a look at it again in a sec, uh, is a, uh, an input um, coupling capacitor here and an output coupling capacitor suitable for the frequency of operation so I've just notionally chosen uh, 100 nanofarads uh, we have an RFC here um, and then this resistor here the R bias resistor which is dropping our VCC down to the required 5 volts um, for this device the RFC that I'm using is just a, an FT37-43 uh, with 10 turns so nothing, um, nothing too surprising there uh, the spec sheet has this chart here, so for standard um, whole number voltages for your VCC rail, for example 12 volts, um, it tells you that that, that resistor there needs to be uh, 100 ohms. Uh, and we'll look at the power dissipation in a sec. Um, the spec sheet also talks about a, uh, um, an operating current of 70 milliamps down here, so where's that, here it is here, device operating voltage is 5 volts notionally and there goes our recommended device operating current is 70 milliamps so that's quite important we need to look at that to make sure we're not going to exceed uh, our power dissipation for that resistor so let's just have a quick look at those calculations and then um, we can arc up the SIGGEN and the um, uh, the uh, oscilloscope, oscilloscope and uh, we can have a look at that so I just mentioned before that um, it needs to run on 5 volts, so in terms of working out, we'll just use Ohm's law now to work out in my particular case, I'm just going to stick with the standard uh, in, in this shack here, 13.8 volts so I need to drop 13.8 volts minus 5 volts uh, across that resistor and from Ohm's law, the voltage uh, across the resistor divided by the current through it gives us um, our resistance, so 13.8 minus 5 divided by seven, uh, 70 milliamps will give us 125 ohms. I'm going to try the, 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 uh, the nearest standard value of 120 ohms. Now I mentioned before 70 milliamps is, is reasonably high, it's not huge but for a biasing current it's a little bit up there for, for a small little device like that. So we just want to make sure we're not going to exceed um, the power dissipation for our 120 ohm resistor. So we know that power equals I squared times resistance. Um, our RMS current that is, so 70 milliamps squared times 120 ohms gives us 0.588 so we'll, we'll basically double um, these little resistors, so my little resistors I've got here a quarter watt, so 0.25 so I've doubled that, I'm over, over twice that, so that's going to result in a bit of smoke, so um, what I'll do now is I'll, uh, I'll look to um, have two resistors in parallel um, in an effort to those two resistors to have the overall resistance of 120 ohms but um, have less current going through each um, and we know that uh, okay so full stop I'm going to basically try uh, two, uh, two 40 ohm resistors in parallel um, and from this formula here which we'll look at very quickly that should give us 120 ohms it's a special case so 1 over our total this is a standard formula for parallel resistors 
and we only have two, so we only have two on the right hand side. So one over r total equals one over r one plus one over r two. Um, we can rearrange things. We can put r t on the right hand side now and move all this to the left hand side. Gives us an r total equals one over one over two forty plus one over two forty. Comes out at um, one hundred and twenty ohms. Didn't need to do any of these calculations here because this is a special case. Two resistors of the same value in parallel, just divide them by 2. So 240 divided by 2 will give us our 120 ohms. Uh, and then just to do a, a quick double check, uh, because these two resistors are now the same value from Ohm's law, we know then that our 70 milliamps is going to be evenly divided by 2. So we're going to have 35 milliamps flowing through each one. So 35 milliamps squared, missing an A there, we'll put that in. Oops. Um, so 35 milliamps squared times 240 comes out at 0.294. So we are slightly in excess of our 0.25 or our 250 milliwatts, but um, close enough for government job and um, it should be enough, enough just to uh, do our experiments here. Um, and then just recapping our 13.8 volts, now uh, subtracting or minus the voltage has been dropped across that resistor, 70 milliamps times uh, 120 ohms, which is the combined total resistance, um, gives us, and you can just sit over the back there, those two uh, parallel resistors there. Um, so 13.8 volts minus 70 milliamps times 120 ohms comes out at 5.4, which is just on the upper limit um, in the spec sheet, so we'll run with that one. Uh, I'll come back to these calculations in a sec. So at the moment we've got um, two inputs going into the amplifier. Um, in the first position, we're just going to have the SIGGEN, which we have up here. So let's just turn it on. And we've got um, 7 megahertz notionally at the moment, um, and our output there. So it's going to drop it down to, uh, that's now down at 1 megahertz. And I've just, um, I've just adjusted the, you can just see it coming in there, um, the amplitude to get us, uh, or, or to keep us in the, uh, the linear range. In other words, a nice sine wave with no distortion. So we'll keep that at 1.7 volts peak to peak. Going back to frequency. So that's now down here at 1 megahertz. And we can just now start to increase. So we're now at 5, uh, 10. You can just see the amplitude starting to grow. Um, I reckon it's probably in this particular test configuration. A maximum of uh, at 14 megahertz up here. And we can continue to go up. As we get close to 20, uh, 20 megs and beyond. Um, that drop off you're seeing here in the scope is more to do with this particular SIGGEN. Um, it really starts to drop off uh, quite a bit, so that around that 20 megs plus up to its maximum of 24. But certainly over um, the vast majority of, of the HF band, uh, well, let's say the area of operation that I'm happy with, uh, it seems to be quite constant indeed. And certainly unlike uh, the 3904, uh, amplifiers that we've been playing around with in the past where the gain really does drop off significantly beyond, um, you know, pick a number, 10 megahertz. Uh, well, certainly above the 40 meter band, it really starts to drop off, uh, which is not unsurprising. You know, this little amplifier here uh, is supposed to be up to 4 gigs, so that doesn't surprise me at all. But um, suffice to say, um, quite a useful little amplifier there. So in terms of its, apps, its actual gain, um, we can do some calculations we see we've got 1.7 volts peak to peak up here, and uh, so we can measure our peak to peak voltage here, and then just use 20 log V out divided by V in. As long as it's both the both peak to peaks, it's going to be a ratio of voltages. We don't have to do any other conversions, um, and we can get our our dB. So we just come back down to the paper. Um, that's what I've done here. So I've done two, two calculations. One notionally at 7 megahertz, so on the, um, the 40 meter band, and then I did another one at the, uh, the 20 meter, or up at 14 megs, which seems to be in this particular configuration I've got down here, um, where it was uh, at its maximum. So we mentioned this before, our gain in dB is 20 log V out over V in. So in the 7 megahertz case, it was 4.1 volts peak to peak divided by our 1.7 volts input uh, peak to peak comes out at 7.6 dB. In the 14 megahertz case we had 4.7 volts so uh, another 0.6 volts more than we had at 7 um, megs 
which gives us a gain of 8.8 .8 dB. So it's not huge, it's not you know 20 odd dB or you know 15 to 20, but um, certainly useful. And um, so I was just sort of having a bit of a think about you know where uh, such an amplifier might be quite useful in uh, the homebrew and. I don't think I'd pick it straight away, right or wrong, uh, as an IF amplifier um, at this stage. However, what you know, a good use would be just to to boost up a little bit of RF. And um, one one option, and this is what we'll do now in the second test, is to increase the output of an AD9850. So this AD9850 here has a normal output into a 50 ohm load of around. Um, one volt peak to peak. Now, uh, to make to to, to to use this in a radios a um, a super hit where we need to use say uh, an SBL one or an ADE dash uh, one, we those are both seven dBm mixers. Now seven dBm equates back to one point four one four volts peak to peak. So that's what you need to get out of this thing into a fifty ohm load. So the SBL1 is designed into 50 uh, to be able to drive that at the right value. So out of the box, so to speak, you need to amplify it. So in this particular case, well, why not use this tiny little um, monolithic amplifier here and see how that works out. So we just, we just flicked this little switch here. We're now going to flick the input um, from the SIG Gen to the, um, to the 9850. Uh, and that's what we're seeing there. So um, that's one volt peak to peak. And we can see a one, two, so two divisions, or four at half, roughly. So, um, so that's good. So that's in excess of our 1.4 volts peak to peak. So we know that we've got more than we need, um, uh, and we just need to bring that down a bit using some kind of resistive pad to bring it back into um, our required or our desired 1.4. 414 volts peak to peak in the case of an, uh, a 7 dBm um, mixer. So just to quickly convert our 2 volts peak to peak into a, a dBm value, um, you'll recall from uh, a video a couple back we had um, to, to, to convert a power to a dBm, we need to divide that power by 1 milliwatt, log it and multiply it by 10. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. So we see we're getting output of 2 volts peak to peak. Uh, and in, in order to work out how much power then is going to be dissipated into a 50 ohm load, we need to find out what the VRMS voltage is, square it and divide it by 50. So 2 volts peak to peak divided by 2 turns it into peak. Multiply that peak by 0 0.7071, turns it into RMS. Square that divided by 50 gives us our, our first power. So the i.e. The, the power into that 50 ohm load. Divide that by one milliwatt. So we're now going to um, reference it to one milliwatt, log it, multiply it by 10, and you'll come out at 10 dBm. So um, that little amplifier with our coming out of the 809850, the output is uh, 10 dBm. Um, and funny old thing, as we just said, we only need 1.414 volts peak to peak for a 7 dBm. Um, mixer we're getting 10 dBm out so we've got um, quite a bit of fat there so like I say just put that through a, a Pi or a T resistive pad and um, you get an output there which would be suitable for for driving a mixer so that's just you know that's just one application which it could be used for um, it could potentially be used as a little amplifier again with the 9850 coming out um, like he had uh, in uh, the last video, which was looking at the, or the video before that, more the point, the uh, the SNA and the antenna amplifier, um, there's no reason why you couldn't use that uh, to boost up the output of that um, 9850 and then pump it out the antenna or feed that through the device under test to go back into the 808307 uh, logarithmic um, amplifier to then feed back into the Arduino. So that's you know that's another little use case for it. Um, like I say, I'm not, I'm not sure if that would be the first choice for uh, an, an IF strip. Um, but again, you know, uh, could be quite used for, as a little pick-off. And, and in fact, I might even look at that um, uh, as a pick-off from the IF to then be detected and to feed into, a um, say, a pan adapter. So that could be an option there. 
um, little fixed uh, gain, little amplifier there. So anyway, so that's all I wanted to touch on tonight, just to have a bit of a play around with this little uh, this little monolithic amplifier and, and see how it went. And um, yeah, I think there's certainly some utility there uh, in the um, in the uh, the homebrew projects here in the shack. So um, I'll certainly bear that in mind, and um, if something comes to mind, I'll, I'll certainly look to use it. So once again, thank you very much for uh, for that, and um, I'll say 73s and uh, continue playing here. Okay, cheers all.